Centroid of an object is the average position of all the points of an object. If the density of all parts of an object are the same, the centroid is also the center of gravity. So let's take, for example, my son's Frisbee golf putter. It's made from one material, it's circular, and that puts the centroid dead in the middle. So if I take this disc and I put my finger in the middle of it, it'll balance almost perfectly on my fingertip. So the centroid is the average position of all the points in an object, and if you have one material like this disc, it is also the center of gravity. We care about the centroid because the orientation of loads with respect to the centroid of a structural elements cross-section dictates structural behavior. So a circular shape is infinitely symmetric, so the centroid exists directly in the middle of the circle. So you can see that red dot. This is an isometric view of a round solid bar. The centroid of that bar is in the middle. The round cross-section, the centroid is in the middle. And if I look along the length, I can draw axes down the middle that represents where the centroid is located. Now, if I apply a force directly onto that centroid, we call this force an axial load. And it will produce only axial force. Axial force occurs along the centroid of any member. If I apply a force any other position, so I could apply it at 90 degrees to the centroid, a force at 90 degrees to the centroid is called a shear force. And this shear force will also result in a moment. So here I've shown a moment acting along the length of the beam of the member. We call this a moment. If I were to have a special moment that acts around the centroid, we would call this a torque. So being able to determine the centroid is important because we need to know how our structural element is going to behave. If we have pure axial force, it will be an axial member. If we have a force any other point, even if it is a, acting along parallel to the member but away from the centroid, it will ultimately cause shear and moment in the element. So it's important to be able to find the centroid so we can tell how something is going to behave. Now, for symmetric elements like a circle or a square or a rectangle, the centroid is easy to find. A, a circle is infinitely symmetric and the centroid is located at the center. A square, a perfect square, has one, two, three, four axes of symmetry, and its centroid is also located in the middle. A rectangle only has two axes of symmetry. Its centroid is also in the middle. Wherever you have an axis of symmetry, The centroid will be located on, at least on. The centroid will be located on. Now, if you look in any statics textbook, you're going to be come upon. The idea that you can find the centroid for through integration. It's basically picking a point 
creating an area, finding that area, and then taking a weightage average of this area and all other subsequent areas and locating the centroid. Now, I agree that you can find this through formal integration, but generally, if you're a good engineer, you're not going to be using unique shapes. You're going to be using things made up of rectangles and circles. And I would argue that with a computer, you can break this very odd shape down into small enough little sections that it will approach becoming a rectangle. So if we're a good engineer and we use good engineering shapes that are made up of rectangles and circles, we can calculate basically the centroid of any element. So here I have a U shape. The U shape has a uniform thickness of 0 0.1 inches. Um, it has a length here of 10 inches and a length here of 10 inches. If we want to find the centroid of this U channel, we need to pick an arbitrary point. And I generally always start from the bottom left. So I'm going to pick this point here and say that it is 0, 0. This is arbitrary. And I'm going to say it's 0, 0, as in x and y of 0, 0. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this U channel, because U is not a fun shape to work with, but it, the U is made up of multiple rectangles. I'm going to cut it here and here and create three rectangles. Two of them are actually exactly the same. I'm going to call them rectangle A. And then the one at the bottom is a little different. It's going to be rectangle B. Rectangle A has dimensions of 9.9 .9 for its length and 0 0.1 for its width. Rectangle B has a width of 10 and a thickness of 0 0.1. So my ultimate goal is to figure out the area of each of these, locate the centroid of each of them, and then I'm going to weight the distance to the centroid of each element by the area and calculate the centroid of the entire cross-section. So for part A, the area of A, so area sub A, is going to be equal to 9.9 .9 times 0 0.1. And that is just the area of a rectangle, which gives us the area of 0 0.99. According to our arbitrary coordinate system, it is going to have an x-coordinate, so the centroid of A, is located in the center of the rectangle, which from our arbitrary coordinate system is 0 0.5 in the x direction, 4.95 in the y direction. That is dividing the 9.9 .9 divided by 2 and adding the 0.1 from the thickness of B to that number. Now, for the other A, that is going to have 
a x location of 9.95. It's not fully 10, but it has the same y location of 4.95. If I look at the area of part B, so area B, that's just going to equal 10 times 0 0.1, which is going to give me 1. If I look at the centroid location, so the centroid of B, it's located at an x of 5 and a y of 0 0.05. So up to the middle of here, over a distance of 5. So here I have all the centroids and their locations. I can calculate the x and y locations of the centroid. So to calculate the locations, all we do is create a weighted average. So the x location of the centroid is going to be the area of A times the distance from our arbitrary axis to the centroid in the x direction. So we're going to do 0 0.99 times 0 0.05 plus 1 times 5, which is the distance the air is the area of B times the x distance to the centroid of B plus 0 0.99 times 9.95. What we then do is divide the entire thing by the total area, which is 0 0.99 plus 1 plus 0 0.99. This gives us, if we do this, an x location equal to 5 inches. Now, this should make sense based on the fact that this U channel has an axis of symmetry that acts through the position of x equals 5. What the U channel does not have is any axis of symmetry that acts in the y direction, so we're going to have to find, act, we would actually have to find the location of the y coordinate of the centroid. If we recognize that there was an axis of symmetry, we could have just said, well, the x coordinate of the centroid is x equals 5 inches. The y coordinate, we're going to do the average in the same way. It's going to be 0 0.99 times 4.95 plus 1 times 0 0.05 plus 0 0.99 times 4.95. If I divide that by the total area again, 0 0.99 plus 1 plus 0 0.99, that gives me a y-coordinate equal to 3.31 inches. So the location of the centroid for this u-channel is at 5, 3.31. Now, all we did was use the rectangular area and the distance to the centroid. Um, you can do this for any common shape. Um, generally, you're going to be breaking things down into rectangles or circles. Um, for a lot of common shapes, the centroids are already calculated, and if you need to know it, it's easy enough to go out there on the internet and find the simple equation for the centroid that you need. But the centroid is an important thing to be able to find because it lets us know how any type of structural member will behave under loading.